and warm welcome to the AI with Arun show. This is your AI weekly update for the week ending November 23rd, 2025. We are calling this week the $57 billion week and the headlines are massive. In the past five days, we saw the true scale of the AI arms race. Our main stories, here we go. NVIDIA reported a monumental $57 billion quarter, confirming that the foundation of the AI revolution is infrastructure. Google dropped its newest and smartest model, Gemini 3, instantly raising the bar for everyone else. And in a sign of pure capital frenzy, the AI coding startup Cursor AI secured a shocking $2.3 billion funding round. Our goal in this episode is to educate you on all these core developments and much more and show you exactly where the future of technology is being built. Four critical trends define the week, essentially creating our AI scorecard. First, the infrastructure arms race. This is the fight to build the physical foundation, the chips, the data centers, and the cooling systems essential for running powerful AI. Companies are committing tens of billions to secure this future. Second, model mastery. The battle between major labs like Google and OpenAI is not just about who is smarter, but who can specialize their models for specific high-value tasks from coding to scientific discovery. Third, the geopolitical chip war. Governments are now treating AI like computing power, like nuclear weapons. The control and export of chips like NVIDIA's are now matters of national security, leading to enforcement actions. And finally, the security and ethics crisis. As models get more capable, the bad guys get better. We have measurable, quantifiable new threats, forcing regulators to play urgent catch up. Let's start with the money. If AI is the new oil, then NVIDIA is still the undisputed king of the drill. NVIDIA announced an eye-watering $57 billion in quarterly revenue. That is a staggering 62% increase compared to the same time last year. They are already projecting $65 billion for the next quarter. This performance puts to rest any worries about any AI market slowdown. The reason? Everyone needs their chips, specifically the Blackwell chips, to train the largest, most cutting-edge models. This demand is not just commercial. NVIDIA just signed a historic deal to supply over 260,000 Blackwell AI chips to South Korean firms. This is vital for South Korea to build its own sovereign AI infrastructure, meaning they have the computing power needed for national security and innovation without relying entirely on outside clouds. But the infrastructure landscape is changing because reliance on one supplier is risky and expensive. Google is hitting back hard by releasing its own custom chips, the seventh generation Ironwood Tensor Processing Units or TPUs. These chips are designed specifically for Google's massive transformer models. Crucially, they offer developers a cost-effective, high-performance alternative to NVIDIA's chips. The introduction of choice is a necessary competition that could potentially lower the astronomical compute costs that are currently pricing many startups out of the game. Meanwhile, the supply chain itself is becoming a national priority. OpenAI, traditionally a software company, is partnering with Foxconn to design and manufacture high-performance AI computing infrastructure like racks and cooling systems in the United States. Now, this is a strategic move to address national security concerns and domesticate the AI supply chain for the United States. The race for hardware control is now drawing the attention of the world's biggest investors and government prosecutors. First, the investment angle. Legendary investor Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway took a $4.3 billion stake in Alphabet, Google's parent company. Analysts see this as a huge vote of confidence in Google's vertically integrated AI strategy. What does vertical integration mean here? It means Google owns the whole stack. They make the chips, the TPUs, or the tensor processing units. They run the data centers, which is the cloud, and they build the software, for example, Gemini. Buffett's move suggests the smart money believes companies controlling this end-to-end -end process will capture the long-term value, potentially reshaping the hardware market. Second, the chip war. The U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, just unsealed charges against four people for conspiring to illegally export advanced NVIDIA GPUs to China. This aggressive enforcement action proves the U.S. government is serious about preventing restricted computing power from aiding frontier AI development in certain countries. It's a very stark warning to the entire 
global supply chain. Now let us shift from the physical foundation to the digital brains. Google officially released Gemini 3, which they tout as their most advanced model yet. Gemini 3 sets new benchmarks, particularly excelling in reasoning, multimodal tasks, and agentic capabilities. In simple terms, it's better at logic. It can seamlessly handle complex combinations of text, images, and video, and it's capable of, of performing multi-step actions autonomously. But the biggest story here is who is paying for it? Apple finalized a $1 billion annual payment to Google. This deal integrates a custom 1.2 trillion parameter Gemini model into Siri via Apple's secure private cloud compute. This monumental partnership instantly upgrades Siri's intelligence, allowing it to handle more complex multi-step tasks while prioritizing user privacy. This move decisively bridges the gap in Apple's perceived AI lag. Google is not the only one pushing the frontier. The race has intensified with models specializing in creative output and complex engineering. Elon Musk's XAI released Rogue 4.1, major upgrades focused on creativity and emotional intelligence. It is designed to outperform predecessors in how well humans prefer the conversations advancing the use of conversational AI in creative industries. Meanwhile, OpenAI released GPT-5.1 Codex Max. This model is not for general chat. It is specifically fine-tuned for complex software engineering tasks and is designed to maintain logical coherence across hundreds of thousands of lines of code. This is targeting the highest value tasks in the $100 billion developer tools market. On the research front, early versions of GPT-5 are already accelerating scientific discovery, assisting researchers with rapid literature review and hypothesis generation in critical fields like medicine. This week also brought a major philosophical earthquake, the limitations of the current generation of AI. Meta's legendary chief AI scientist, Jan Lekan, departed the company. This is a massive loss for Meta. His departure was rooted in a public and scientific conviction. Lincoln firmly believes that large language models, LLMs, are fundamentally flawed and not a viable path to achieving AGI, artificial general intelligence. This is the long-term goal of building human-level thinking machines. Lincoln's exit is expected to significantly shift corporate research and development strategies globally, encouraging labs to explore alternative neural architectures rather than simply trying to make existing LLMs bigger and bigger. Now let's talk about the capital story one more time. When the chips are this powerful and the models are this smart, investors are pouring in billions. The AI coding tool Cursor AI secured $2.3 billion in funding, pushing its valuation to an astounding $29.3 billion. This company launched in 2023 has already hit $1 billion in annualized revenue. This massive cash infusion shows the urgent demand for tools that dramatically enhance programmer productivity. In a move that links back to our infrastructure theme, Anthropic, the creators of the cloud models, committed to colossal $30 billion compute partnership with Microsoft Azure and NVIDIA. This includes securing one gigawatt of capacity and up to $15 billion in direct investment. This massive commitment allows Anthropic to scale its safer, highly capable cloud models for massive enterprise deployments. These new models are not just being chatted with, they are being deployed to take over business operations. This is the age of the AI agent. An AI agent is essentially a piece of software that can perceive, it can reason, and can act to achieve a goal autonomously, often involving multiple steps. Salesforce introduced Agent Force Commerce, an agentic platform that connects product catalogs directly to external AI channels like ChatGPT for highly personalized shopping experiences. This transforms retail by seamlessly boosting customer engagement. We also saw massive adoption. Global consultancy firm Cognizant is deploying advanced cloud AI models to 350,000 employees. This redefines how large-scale content consultancy, software engineering, and modernization services are delivered worldwide. However, there is a crucial catch. While 62% of organizations are experimenting with agents, a survey shows a massive 95% failure rate 
when trying to transition these pilot projects to full scale. The technology is ready, but the challenge is fundamentally redesigning the human workflow. The urgency of these technological leaps mean regulators are scrambling to keep up, but they are taking different paths. In the US, the White House halted a draft executive order. This order would have restricted state governments from passing their own AI regulations by threatening to cut federal funding. The pause maintains the current complex patchwork of US. AI governance allowing states to pursue different paths of innovation. Meanwhile, in Europe, where the landmark AI Act is being rolled out, the European Commission introduced the Digital Omnibus Proposal. This is designed to simplify the implementation of the EU AI Act and other digital rules. The goal is to reduce compliance burdens, which industry worried were stifling European innovation, striking a balance between safety and economic competitiveness. The investment in, in, in infrastructure is driving true global decentralization. Countries want their own AI capabilities, their own sovereign AI. Microsoft announced a massive $10 billion investment for a major AI data center in Science Portugal, bolstering Europe's digital sovereignty. Google also pledged 5 billion euros for new data centers in Germany. These efforts support AI infrastructure that specifically complies with strict EU data rules. India released comprehensive AI governance guidelines. Importantly, India is focusing on voluntary commitments, watermarking and privacy safeguards, strategically shifting away from the prescriptive command and control mandates seen in the EU. And Google DeepMind opened a major research lab in Singapore. This lab is focused in adopting the Gemini model family and developing AI agents that respect regional, linguistic, and cultural nuances, actively helping to decentralize Western dominance in AI research. As AI capability rises, so does the risk. This week brought a terrifying clarity on the security threat landscape. AI-generated deepfakes are now fueling $1 billion in global fraud losses, with voice scams being particularly widespread. The alarming figure is that deepfake detection rates have plummeted below 50%, meaning we can't reliably tell what is real anymore. But the most chilling news involves direct state-level threats. Anthropic documented the first reported AI-orchestrated cyber threat. A Chinese state-sponsored group used the cloud model to conduct AI-driven espionage, targeting over 30 entities. This confirms that autonomous AI can now be used maliciously to plan and execute attacks, forcing global defenses to rapidly enhance their security protocols. In response to these rising harms, regulators are finally wielding real legal power. The UK enacted strict new laws, giving regulators the legal authority to actively audit generative image models for child abuse material. This addresses a surge in synthetic harm cases and sets a significant global precedent for holding technology companies responsible for the safety of their tools. On the fairness front, a Stanford study documented systemic age and gender bias in generative AI outputs. Specifically, it highlighted discrimination against older women in sensitive areas like resume evaluations and job opportunities. To better test safety, researchers introduced SAGE, the Safety AI Generic Evaluation Framework, S-A-G-E. SAGE uses adversarial agents in realistic multi-turn conversations to test LLM safety because researchers found that higher risks often emerge during longer, more complex interactions rather than simple single prompt questions. Now for some astonishing breakthroughs in pure discovery, pure proving that AI is now the ultimate research partner. Future House unveiled Cosmos, an AI that acts like an entire research scientist. Cosmos can process 1500 scientific papers and run 42,000 lines of code per session. It achieved 79.4% accuracy in complex conclusions, including discoveries related to Alzheimer's. Meanwhile, DeepMind's AlphaProof, a mathematical AI, solved Olympiad-level mathematical problems, earning a silver medal status with verifiable proofs. This advancement will fundamentally impact high-level cryptography and scientific modeling. Finally, Google launched NanoBanana Pro, 
a next generation image model. This model is capable of stunning 4K resolution output. Reflecting the high computational cost of photorealism, this model carries a significantly higher price point, establishing a new premium tier for professional grade creative asset generation. To wrap up our whirlwind tour of the AI world, let's summarize the velocity and scale of this week. Scale is everything. This week proved the industry is building physical infrastructure at a staggering pace. We saw $57 billion revenue, $30 billion in compute deals, and massive investments in sovereign AI hubs across Europe and Asia. Then capability and risk are linked. Models like Gemini 3 are achieving breakthrough reasoning, but their immediate deployment introduced severe new threats including $1 billion in deep fake fraud and first documented AI orchestrated cyber attack. Governance is now actionable. Regulators are moving past discussions to real world enforcement, whether through the simplification of the EU Act or the DOJ's aggressive export control charges. The central lesson for this week is clear. Infrastructure is the new software. The most critical strategic conflict in the world is the race to control the entire AI supply chain from the powerful chips, the NVIDIA and the G Google's TPUs, to the final specialized models, Gemini 3 and GPT-5 Codex Max. With that, we come to the end of the show. Support our work by joining us as a member. If you go to the description of this video, at the very bottom, you will see a link of becoming a member of this channel. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to the AI with Arun show. We'll be back soon. Thank <laughs> you.